Hey there, this is Malorian, and this is going to be a Warhammer Fantasy Battle Report. And kind of a, a special one for me, because it's my first time facing uh, one of these Battle Scrolls. So what Games Workshop is doing is over the Christmas season, they're releasing some of these Battle Scrolls. Where if you take these certain things, you get this bonus. And they're really based around the type of Christmas packages they're giving out. And so the one I'm going to be facing today is the Vampire Count one. So this one, you have to be taking a lot of ghouls and stuff like this. You also, also have to take the Graveyard. However, um, if anything around the graveyard, you can give out regen to. I believe if you already have regen, you get to re-roll it. Uh, you get extra channel attempts if you're a vampire or death. And uh, any enemy around it are minus one leadership. The big negative is that you have to take another unit of 20 ghouls that don't count against your core. So normally you take as little core as possible, but in this one you take a little bit more. Uh, there's probably more details, or maybe I screwed something up. I'm doing this off of what was told to me. I didn't read it, but uh, it's going to be kind of interesting. So let's see what happens. Alright, so I'm going to be reading my dwarves, and it turns out we got Watchtower. I won the roll to see who took it, and I decided to take it because of these 20 quarrelers. They're not really killer in combat, they don't have great weapons, but uh, hey, it's uh, dwarves, so they're fairly resilient anyway, and uh, you know, hopefully I can hold it long enough so I can replace them with something else. Uh, on his side here, so you can see that he's going to be having this... Uh, Ghoul Lord. I forgot the name of this stupid thing now. It's not the Vampire Lord. It's like the Ghoul version. Uh, but he also has a level 4 in the back there, a level 2. The level 4 is Vampires. Level 2 is Death. And uh, these guys uh, can be pretty killer against the building there. That Vampire Lord is a Blender Lord. And uh, that makes it kind of scary. He also has a Banshee in there too. So overall, the board looks like this. You can see he has his free graveyard there. And then there's the building, the watchtower in the center. On the far left, that's a Temple of Skulls. The next thing is an Elven Waystone. I have a fence on my side, a Mysterious Forest. And on the far right, there's a Charnel Pit. On either of my flanks, you can't see them, but there's a cannon. Then I'm going to have two of the Dragon Slayers, two organ Guns, a uh, Grudge Thor that's you know, Strength 5 and Reroll Scatter. I have my Rune Lord there, a BSB, a, what is it, 38 Warriors with Shields, and 40 Warriors with Great Weapons. And then coming off the board, they're not here yet, will be 20 Miners. On his side, he has some Zombies on the left, the Zombies back there with those Casters, those Hex Wraiths. Uh, skeletons with the Vampire Lord, well, whatever he's called, like, uh, God, I can't remember his name, I don't really try, but then there's the Crypt Horrors, uh, more Skeletons, there is a Mortis Engine, and then some more Ghouls. So lots and lots of core, which I'm not really worried about, uh, however, that Vampire Lord, no matter what he's in, is going to do a lot of damage, and so are those uh, Crypt Horrors. So I'm really worried he's going to charge right in there and do lots of damage, but uh, we'll see what happens. Uh, first turn he does, though, this really surprises me. He doesn't actually go and charge the building. He actually just takes the hex rates and goes through there to do some hits on me. So he kills, I think, one guy with this, but <laughs> I was really happy he didn't charge me. Uh, what he does instead is he kind of just moves up. Uh, he has the Banshees and the Mortis Engine and the Banshee Hero uh, yell at me. And so between that, I've now lost five guys in total. So that's not too bad. I mean, really, if you would have charged in the Vampire Lord, that would have been just devastating. But I think this is what happens sometimes, that when you have these tricks in your army, you want to use the tricks and not what could be more devastating. So I'm, I'm guessing that's what happened here. But uh, hey, I'll take it. Uh, looking at this picture, the big thing that I see now as a possibility is that if I go and send my warriors into those hex rays and overrun, I can clip the skeletons and stop them from charging the building. Because one of the things I'd love to do is do some of my building shenanigans. I would love to reform and send in a character, or uh, you know, in a later turn, I'd love to reform and just like if I didn't have anyone in there, just do the whole watchtower blitz where you do a swift reform and walk in. 
Uh, the problem is that with movement three, it's mathematically impossible. So that, that's kind of a problem. But uh, so yeah, I'm going to have to try and find out these more extreme ways to try and lock them down. So on my turn, that's what I do. I basically swift three, four, and move up, use the animal to charge. I really, really would rather have the BSB on the with the other unit to deal with the crypt horrors, but I just could not depend on these guys fully crumbling from the uh, charge here. I really needed the extra combat weapon, uh, well, res, and the magical weapon on this guy. So the BSB is here, and this should go off fairly easily. And yeah, I kill those guys, they crumble, and I overrun to the skeletons. And this is fantastic, because at least for one turn, I'm going to block him from charging in. Otherwise, it looks like this. I really try and do my shooting to try and take down uh, his Mortis Engine or also the Vargolf. But man, it is kind of a waste. Because first of all, my opponent was really good with using the uh, building to try and block uh, the different you know, line of sight and all these things. So that made it hard. I could just focus everything on him. And then, man, I mean, trying to kill that Vargolf, I don't have flaming on my war machines, so it's going to re-roll its regen save, so that thing is tough. And uh, even though there's no re-roll the mortar engine right now, he just made enough, so I think I did like one wound, and that's basically it. On his turn here, I actually got kind of lucky because I didn't see this coming. Uh, the way it looked to me it was that the Crypt Horrors would clip the building so they couldn't charge me. Uh, and so what he does is he declares a charge of the Crypt Horrors onto me and the Ghouls into the building. And uh, he, he luckily, he needed like a 5 and he rolled like a 3. So everything failed here, but that could have really thrown a wrench in my plans. Uh, talking about throwing a wrench in my plans, I've already used my basically Dispel Scroll in the first turn. Because he's going to cast Van Hales and I had to make sure those Hex Race didn't move. So... That's already gone. Uh, past this, he does some screaming. He does some magic. Uh, raises up some zombies in front of me. I don't really care about that because I'm not rushing into combat here. But he does kill a few more of my quarrelers. And over here, oh, my BSB did great. Uh, basically, he issues no challenge. He moves both the, the Banshee and his Vampire Lord guy uh, over to fight me. Now, really, that Vampire Lord should crush me, but this guy's just weapon or strength 5. So he's wounding me on 4s. I still have a 4 plus armor, and luckily I survived the one wound, and I also kill the Banshee. So that'll be less screaming going into, well, anything, and I hold these guys up, which is great. So overall, end of his turn looks like this. Uh, basically, the units are slowly moving up, but nothing really too much. Uh, my turn over here, I try and charge in this uh, naked little dwarf, and I fail. And otherwise, what I do is I have the corollers come out, and I have the great weapons go in. And now, this is looking good, because when you got 40 of these dwarves in there that are pretty killy, that is great. So, uh, now it's going to keep all the rest back. So everything else basically looks like this, and again, I just can't do any real damage because of the, the regens, the re-rolls, and all the stuff like that. Like, my war machines are a really big disappointment. And I gotta say, too, I mean, my opponent's doing really well for having everything uh, covered. You know, if I want to send the right cannon into his mortis engine, I'd have to go through the crypt horse first and all this stuff. So yeah, again, I mean, I'd love to take all these supporting elements but I can't do it because I don't have the flaming runes. And why do I not have those? Because the demon prints. Those would always be uh, bog standard before. But now with the demon prints, you just can't risk having a cannon that can So otherwise, uh, this is how it looks then on the next turn here. Uh, basically, we just kept on fighting in combat. He kept on yelling. And I'm still holding him up in combat. Uh, he's now killed my BSB. But, uh, yeah, that's not too bad. On his turn here, he goes and charges the Crypt Horrors into the tower. Um, you know, there's only three of them that can fight, so I'm not really too worried about that. Over here, he sends the other zombies into my Naked Man, and that's okay. And over here, he tries to send the Vargolf into my flank, but again, he needs something like a five and fails it. So his dice have been not helping him today. And otherwise with this, he does some magic here, does some screams and all this stuff. And uh, you can see here, it's really tightly packed. All this fighting around the Watchtower. And this is what I love about Watchtower. This is what it's supposed to be all about. The armies 
all bunched around trying to fight over this tower. And uh, yeah, I love it. So otherwise, oh, yeah, it was bound to happen. The, you know, beats and breaks my uh, shield warriors. Uh, luckily, I got away, so I still have them. Uh, he was able to get off some magic so that he had the re-rolls to hit on the Crypt Horrors. And with that, he's able to kill some of my guys. But the main thing here is that I am minus one leadership from the graveyard and also minus one leadership from the actual vampire power he has. So for these fear tests, I'm just on leadership seven. And I've already had to sacrifice my BSB. So this is a dangerous spot where, you know, I can be losing combats because of failing fear tests. And then I might be steadfast on a nine. But if I just fail that, I'm in a lot of trouble. Uh, meanwhile, he also snuck a wound on my naked dwarf, the Dragon Slayer on the left. Over here, my miners finally come in, and I'm really looking forward to them charging in and killing his level 4. Uh, finally, this naked man gets into combat. And over here, I use the anvil to charge his flank. And uh, I really did not do as well as I thought I would. I did... One wound to his uh, level four, but basically after this, on the reform, I just go and I spread out, and now I'm ready to really kill this unit, and especially if nothing else, kill the level four. So after this turn, it looks like this. I felt really stupid having my corollers when they left the building looking the other way. Uh, if they were facing the correct way here, I could have charged them into the Crypt Horrors to hopefully hold them up another turn. But uh, yeah, basically I had to waste this turn turning around. I rallied with my Shield Warriors, which is fairly nice. And in both combats, my Slayers are down to one wound. I mean, he needs fives of hits and sixes the wound, but they're just coming in there. So eh, what can you do? Uh, again, yeah, my shooting, not doing what it's supposed to be doing. Trying to go after the Vargolf, but with those re-rollable uh, regens, just did one wound. That's it. On his turn here, the Crypt Horrors charge in again. And he does something kind of different here I didn't expect. The, he kind of leaves the unit with his Vampire Lord. Now, he goes behind the building in such a way that I can't see him with any of my war machines. And then the skeletons are moving up. But this is kind of a really risky play. Otherwise, here you can see he has a lot of units that are coming after my miners. And that's really great because, I mean, to me, by the time that they can actually deal with me, I should have already done my, my the work I needed to do. And really, if he kills my miners, I don't care, right? The real target is just the watchtower. After everything's said and done, it looks like this, and I still did not kill that level 4. Now, he, he healed himself up again from what he happened the last time, but I did another wound on him now, so just keep on going away. But I failed my fear test, so that really hurt in me trying to kill those zombies. I also failed my fear test in that tower there, so again, I'm losing some more guys, but really not that much, so it's going okay. And uh, he also killed my Dragon Slayer on the right. On my turn, oh, so I, I now have these Quarrelers turned around to deal with him. I put on a Stone Thrower onto his Skeletons. It scatters. I re-roll. It scatters again. And I kill almost all my Quarrelers. So they're ineffective now. Otherwise, I charge into these Skeletons. Should be an easy fight. But after everything's said and done, yeah, I failed my fear test against the skeletons. I fled. Uh, luckily, I got away. And then on the left, still fighting those zombies. Uh, at the very top there, I've now killed the level four. Finally, uh, there's been some reforming going on. But, I mean, those miners are dead now. They, with once the Vargolf and all that combat res gets in there, they're dead. But they did their job, and I'm happy. Yeah, here comes a supercharge, and miners, you did good. You did good. Over here, he actually doesn't charge this turn. He really wants to set up for a supercharge, uh, so he's going to risk it. So he takes his Vampire Lord and joins here, because then he can set in three of these guys and the Vampire Lord. So I am at least going to get to roll on the uh, you know chance of ending the game, but if these guys charge, it's going to hurt. Over here, he goes for Purple Sun. He gets it with Irresistible Force, gets the big, huge explosion, not sucked into the warp, but then he also just rolls a two, and it doesn't make it to the building. So, kind of a, just a loss on his side. 
And otherwise, at the end here, he had charged my warriors and uh, caught them. So all my shield warriors are gone. Uh, up there, he destroyed my miners, ran them down, and uh, yeah, looking pretty bad there. But I'm holding on to this building, and I can try and win. So basically on my turn here, uh, yeah, it does not go the way I would really like it to. The I can't dispel the, the purple sun. It goes through the building, kills some of my guys. Uh, yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. I mean, I'm trying to shoot and kill this mortis engine, but again, I just can't do it because of this regen. So it's just nothing's going my way for the shooting. I lost my Dragon Warrior on the left, and uh, I didn't roll a 6, so we keep going. So on his turn, these guys charge in, and that's going to really hurt. And unfortunately, I fail, and he takes it. I didn't roll the, the 9, and I break. So he's here in the building, and really with the Vampire Lord and all these Crypt Horrors, game over. So here's a kind of final shot. I believe actually this is on turn six. So I've actually got two chances of roll at this point, but I didn't get the six. I didn't get the five. And like I said, I mean, the way it is now, I just cannot take those guys out of the building. So we just call the game here. So there you go, a win for the vampires. But I feel I really did have a good chance there. I mean, the way it went, I didn't roll the 6, I didn't roll the 5. If I just would have held there, I would have had a chance to roll the 4. So, you know, it really was a very even game. Uh, one mistake I definitely made is on the turn where my shield warriors rally, on the next turn when I sent them back into the skeletons, what I really should have done is faced them over towards the Crypt Horrors and sent them into that flank, because that would have then held them down. But I didn't do that. Maybe I just would have lost anyway and broke just like I did. But that probably would have been the better play to try and keep those guys off me for another turn. But either way, very interesting. Uh, as far as the Battle Scroll goes, you know, looking at it, it seems fairly fair. I mean, uh, you basically are, are paying that unit of the uh, 200 points for the 20 ghouls. So with the different bonuses you're getting, you know, it, it really, really depends. Because, I mean, if it wasn't Watchtower, I could have just sat back in a corner and shot you up type thing, right? Wherever you deploy that the graveyard, I'll go in the opposite corner. Uh, of course, with Watchtower, that's not possible. I had to go to the center. But I really think in friendly games, if somebody ever wanted to use one of these, I would never say no. These seem to be very balanced. Uh, I think in a tournament, though, I'm not really liking the idea of it. And it's not really so much the bonuses, the, the regen and all that stuff. I think it's more of the graveyard. That's the thing that I actually think wouldn't work in a tournament. I know going back... Uh, a lot of times for the Wood Elves, they got that free forest. And in tournaments, it would be banned, because especially in 7th, Woods was very more, a lot more powerful. And depending where you placed it, you could really control the board. And you can do the same thing with this graveyard. It's a very large, large footprint. And vampires, an army that needs to stay together and work in the bubble, um, you can really go and take that graveyard and say, bam, this is going to guard this one flank, and then everything's going to work on this other side of it, meanwhile getting all these uh, buffs and I can basically just work around it and I mean this also kind of synergizes where if you are playing on a board that has other terrain that you can link it up with I mean really this can be really changing the way that the tournament organizers really want the battle to flow because they don't know a big graveyard is going to be here all of a sudden right that's it's a pretty big game changer so that's the only part that I think is really uh not fair or balanced, but otherwise, I mean, the points you're paying uh, for just getting the extra regen or the reroll, I think it's okay. It's nothing I would complain about. So there you have it, and uh, hope you like watching it. Bye.